Afternoon VC, Aris here. Wednesday, Wednesday content. This is kind of a, a reaction to some of the comments I've got about the, the frequency of videos I do. And uh, yeah, so I thought, you know, I'm always wanting to take comments on board. And uh, you know, one if a frequent commenter, Sven Gunson from Stockholm. Hi Harris, please make less videos. What a fucking Muppet that bloke is, to be honest. Um, and that was one of the more positive ones. But, um, also, also, um, I was put Gary, physical format rock and roll. I've seen, seen this doing the rounds. I like Gary. Don't know Gary in the slightest, but we've, we've had a few comments in the comment section once in a blue moon. Um, five overplayed songs that you still love. And I've seen a few people doing it. And I've also seen uh, 10 songs I hate or something like that, which I don't want to do. I'm trying to, I'm trying to keep it positive at the moment. I'm in, a, I'm in quite a zven, a holistic mode at the moment. Uh, so I don't want to do negative. So what I've done... I'm doing 10, over, 10 overplayed songs that I love. I don't care. Come at me. I'm a, I'm a maverick. I don't play by the rules. I threw the rule book out years ago. In fact, if there's one person on the VC who doesn't need a rule book, it's the Piltsmeister General. And uh, Oh, hang on. What's this? Oh, no. There it is. I found it. It's the rule book. Thank God. I've been looking for this for ages. So, uh, good times. Oh, and it was on top of my... Uh, Remote control. There you go. I've been looking for that for ages as well. So win-win. We're living the dream. Good times. <laughs> Loving it. <laughs> anyway, on with it. Ten overplayed songs that I still love. First up, here it is. When Doves Cry by Prince. I remember hearing this in uh, 82. At school, we used to have music class, and they used to tape the top 40 and play it. And uh, the teacher would play it back, and we'd all just sit there listening and writing rubbish, crotchets, waivers, you name it. And uh, I remember when Doves Cry 1982 came on and it just blew my head off. It really did. And uh, it's got no bass, apparently, no bass used. And uh, I still love it. It still gets played all the time. This 12 inch got 17 days on the B, which is, I think, one of his great. Is this his greatest ever B side or is that Erotic City? I'll let you decide. Leave a comment below your favourite Prince B side. But yeah, still not sick of this. Still love it every time it comes on. Next up, this maybe more applies to England more than America because. In England, with the dawn of digital radio, there's millions of, you know, indie 80s stations, alternative 80s stations. This Charming Man by The Smiths. I've got it here in the uh, remixed Francis Kevorkian remix, which is all right. And, of course, the classic original This Charming Man by The Smiths. If you're listening to uh, alternative 80s radio, whatever, you'll hear this ten times a day. It's, 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 it was their first... The Hand in Glove they released on a 7. This was their first big hit. It all got to 25 in the UK. And then a slew of top 20 singles followed it. And uh, what an incredible single it is, isn't it? That, that guitar intro, the intro by Johnny Marr is one of the... sort of Johnny Marr imagining what the birds would be like if they were signed to Motown. Or just phenomenal. And you know how dog, dogs can hear a certain tone of whistle? There was something about Morrissey's lyrics that only... Since sexually confused 14 year old males seem to be out of here, and I, I, I'd put myself in that category at the time. And a fantastic punctured bicycle on a hillside desolate deflation. I was that punctured bicycle, and I couldn't get up the hillside. He was, he was a genius, Morrissey, for a moment. I still don't mind him. I can separate the man from the politics. I, I, I love it. Incredible, this charming man. Still sounds incredible. Prefer the Hatful of Hollow version where they go full on Motown when you listen to it um brilliant but that opening riff it's forever in it it's the most iconic opening almost of any song ever so the smiths this charming man still not sick of it next up huge in the uk ghost town by the specials um pretty much the biggest cliche in music um Britain was absolutely on its knees when this came out in 1980. Um, race riots, unemployment was running at 10%. Margaret Thatcher was busy annexing the north of England. If any, and I say it's the biggest cliche in UK music documentaries, if any song epitomised England in 1980, it was Ghost Town by the Specials. Um, incredible. They were the first band in, to ever have seven consecutive number ones in the UK, not even the Beatles. So, sorry, seven consecutive top tens with their first seven singles in the UK. Not even the Beatles did that. And an uh, incredible song. Played all the time. Still not sick of it. Jerry Dammers was falling out with the band. 
he was going in a more easy listening direction, sort of almost easy listening jazz direction. So, just still a striking song, still a striking video. And the B-side, if, if anyone ever wants to know what it was like going out in the UK for a drink when you were about 17, listen to Friday night, Saturday morning. It's the best evocation of drinking in the UK in the 80s. Incredible. <laughs> but yeah, I still love Ghost Town by The Specials. Next up, incredible this. Talking of Britain, it's a, we're four years on now in Britain. It's still a complete mess. Two Tribes by Fankie Goes to Hollywood. This is the... Uh, this is the um, Annihilation mix. It came out in a, a show, got to number one. I don't think this got to, got anywhere in America, did it? This was number one in the UK for nine weeks. Um, incredible, incredible. I've also got it on the uh, Carnage mix and the Peace mix, the 80 minute Peace mix. Just phenomenal song, really. It's, still get this for about a pound in England everywhere, this 12 inch. Um, England at the time, 84, was uh, probably no better than 1980. Unemployment's still running high, but now we have the Cold War, and it was pretty much in everyone's heads that we were probably gonna get bombed at some point by Russia. So Frank, Frankie very kindly um, left a lot of nuclear war statistics and how we're probably the most likely to get battered on the back. And I remember when this got to number one, Breakfast TV, and bear in mind, Britain only had three channels, I think, at this time, used to do a top 10 rundown and it always used to, this was number one for nine weeks. So every morning before going to school, I watched the incredible video because they showed it of Gorbachev and Regan having a wrestling match. It was, it was uh, directed by Kevin Godley, I think, of, of, of Godley and Cream, or used to be in 10CC. The most phenomenally sinister video ever. And that's what we were watching as 12 year olds. <laughs> Reagan and Gorbachev literally pounding the crap out of each other in a, in a squared circle with a load of journalists watching. It, it's, it seemed like, looking back, it seemed like the most incredible piece of art terrorism you could ever have. This nine minute high energy disco track, two world leaders beating the crap at each other. And then my mum's like, yeah, have a good day at school. And I'm like, yeah, I hope I can make it to maths. <laughs> it was in phenomenal. Probably wouldn't happen nowadays, would it? Probably wouldn't happen. And, and presented by Frank Boff in the mornings. And anyone who knows about Frank Boff and what happened to him later on, it, it just makes it, as I said, the most incredible art terrorism of all time. <laughs> Fantastic, but uh, yeah, Two Tribes by Frankie still gets played a lot. I still love it. Or any of those remixes. Next up, Enjoy the Silence by Depeche Mode. I think just incredible track. Where they're, all their craft work and rock fantasies came together. Still love it. Still, this is the uh, 12 inch with the, uh, again, Francis Kevorkian remix on it. So you get a lovely nine minute version. And you get the ecstatic dub on the B, which is a 12 minute version, but the, 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 the hands and feet mix is superb, but this still sounds fresh as a daisy to me. Incredible. Next up, Ashes to Ashes by Bowie. Ah, just phenomenal. I, I remember when I, when I first heard it. I mean, it was a huge hit in the UK. I think it, was it his first number one? It might have been, or maybe his second number one. Steve Strange on the video and uh, kind of invented the new romantics. Kind of invented the 80s, didn't it? Ashes to Ashes. And, uh, to me, still sounds years ahead of its time. And uh, another incredible video. And uh, yeah, Ashes to Ashes by David Bowie. Yeah. Still don't get sick of it. Still gets played all the time on drive time. Next up, Money Making Scheme here. Huge number one. I think this was Madonna's first number one in the UK. Into the Groove. Never released in America. What were they thinking? If you go around England's second hand record shops, you'll find about eight copies of this in a day. Averaging about, about three or four pound each. In America, these go for about $40 each. Just, we could set up a business, who wants in? We could export copies of Into the Groove. Incredible. And the B-side as well. Everybody, a uh, uh, sort of electro classic. I love, I used to, uh, I used to break dance to this at school, like I loved it. Because we couldn't afford any imports, so we had to rely on Everybody by uh, Madonna. And also, Shooby Doo, written by uh, Niall Rogers from Sheik. If, if any song encompasses me, 14 years old, singing mournfully into a hairbrush as I've been dumped for the 13th time that month, it's Shooby Doo by Madonna. But uh, yeah, Into the Groove, still an absolute classic. What was America thinking? Mental. Another beaut. Joe Jackson stepping out, just an, uh, an electronic glider. He never bettered this. And uh, yeah, got this on the 12, and it's just... Wonderful, and another wonderful video. And I think this was a bigot in America, wasn't it, Stepping Out? But timeless, never get sick of Stepping Out by Joe Jackson. Put it on after this video. In fact, 
Unsubscribe, turn this video off and put it on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is such a beaut. I, bought, I played all these songs yesterday just to see if I still loved them. And this is the one that got about six plays. Young Hearts Run Free by Candy Statton. It's, the, it's been with me all my life, really. Whether I was at an indie club that had an ironic moment, they'd whack it on. Or if I'm at a disco night, which, you know, you had those revival nights. Or even if I, a wedding. Britain's wedding DJs are contractually obliged to play this. every day. And as soon as I hear the intro to this, the... Da, 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 da. I can hear the wedding DJ like, oh, it's uh, been a lovely night for Sarah and Steve. So it's uh, Caddy Statton's uh, Young Hearts Run Free and please, no sausage rolls on the dance floor. <laughs> what? No sausage rolls? Every time, <laughs> every time I hear this, I think of weddings and it sounds great. And you can do the Young Hearts Run Free. It's just, oh, it's, I never get sick of this. It's the most, it's wonderful. Put it on. Turn this video off. Unsubscribe. Put this on. It's beautiful. Last up, Tracy Chapman's Fast Car. Uh, I mean, I love it. I still love it. Be beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And uh, I'm going to play it again in a minute. I just love it on the 12. Sounds beautiful. So that's me 10 overplayed tunes that I still love listening to. And I'll, still, I'll probably play these all again in a minute. And uh, take care, everyone. See you soon.